Welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, guys. So today we're fixing fence. All right, so before we get started and get it to the fence part, um, actually, we got a huge ant nest right here, so Charlie might want to be aware that there's a... Those suckers oh. are psycho mad. All right, we're gonna anyway. take a picture of that, hold on. They are one perturbed group of kids. Yeah, stay away from me. All right, hmm. sorry, anyway. distractions. Distractions always, all the time, right? Okay, so there was a person who asked um, where we came up with the name Black Acre for the ranch. So I am an attorney. I do patent law. And um, intellectual property is a class or property is a class in law school. Anyway, it's always about some fictitious piece of land and so forth. Well, the name they predominantly just give to the land is Black Acre. And if you have a Black Acre, then there's another piece of land it's called maybe red acre blue acre green acre i mean it just goes on so it's just a fictitious piece of land and i always thought it'd be nice to kind of have a piece of property and call it black acre since i'm an intellectual property attorney doing patent law it only fits that it's black acre right so that's why we got the name that's why it's there um but anyway let's get to work and avoid these little ants because they are some fierce dudes okay Today's project is fixing some of these fences. And this is the south pasture. This is where the fence crew came in and they redid their stuff. You can see our new line up here. We've got some T-posts that are set in and they're just spaced with the old ones. So this is the old person's fence. We put our T-posts in and so forth. But they never, as you can see, rehooked any of these up. Um, and the closer ones, they never did anything with these. They never hooked any of these up, so it's really a crappy job. Kind of pissed about it and uh, not really thrilled, but they didn't tighten the barbed wire. So I've been doing some research about how to tighten this barbed wire. This isn't too bad, but we'll show you a spot that's a little worse. And to do that, people have used what's called a Texas, fe <laughs> Texas fence fixer, which would be the proper way. Anyway, this is just a simple product. I haven't even used it yet. But in theory, you put the wire between here when it's open and then you bind it and you squeeze it together and then you just, of course, latch it over here so it stays and then you wrap new barbed wire. So that's the process, but we're going to give this a try and see if I can do it. Yeah, I need a screwdriver too. It's in my pocket. Okay. I have to die. There's some rough terrain out here with all this mulching stuff. What did you do? You poke yourself? Yeah. You got pliers? Normally people would be doing this with gloves. I offered you gloves. Should I go get you some gloves? Can you straighten it? Yep. Take this. Stab myself twice. Once on each arm. Hand. Not gotten into that. It's a little bit weak. I'm just gonna give it three loops. side. Well, that's where Nathan cut it and I cut it. This is probably not the uh, best showing. Ouch. Okay, screwdriver. Oh wait. So you're basically twisting the old and the new together, right there. Yeah, they always twist better on YouTube. Well, this is your first time, 
So, you know, you get better with time. Well, I've heard that before. It's like 20 years is, you know, you survived. I mean, you got a lot better. Check that out. Yeah. That's nice. It's a lot tighter. Try and keep it as tight as you can. Wear gloves, people. Don't follow his example. I'm Mr. Safety. I've always been ah! been known for safety. <laughs> the Holy children are gonna mother. think you die. Gosh, gaucho wire sucks. I think I'm officially passing the torch to Nathan to try the next one. And you'll be finding some gloves. They're supposed to go opposite directions, I believe, from what I've seen online. So as this one goes this way, the other one goes the opposite direction. And we'll give it a little love. Yay! Nice and tight. We like it tight. That's right. All right, so Charlotte got me some gloves. She thinks I'm some pansy or something, whatever. So the tightness and looseness is kind of being affected by the T clips that, or the post clips that they've already got on there. So we're cutting off these old ones because we're just going to be sticking them to our new ones with new ones, new post clips. So if we take these off, then we can do one tightening and get the whole length as opposed to multiple little ones. Don't worry, that fell on their side. We're just returning their property. It's their clip, right? Okay, all right. That looks pretty good. So the barbed wire that we're putting on there, the new one, it's about 18 inches. It just needs to be long enough that you can wrap it three or four on each end and then wrap the middle. Um, so am I using a measuring tape? No. The other thing I wanted to mention, before we started this ranch, the question was, wow, you know, I like power plug-in tools. And I really, you know, want to have that power from plug-in electric. So maybe we get a generator, maybe we do something like that so we can always have power with electric. Um, Charla convinced me multiple times trying to tell me, just go ahead and get these battery ones. Oh my gosh, this stuff is sweet. Like, I don't even want to buy a powered corded in, like tool anymore half the time. I'm looking at cordless nailers, framing nailers, finished nailers that are all battery operated. I've actually been, anyway, really impressed. Not sponsored, just used. So anyway, thought I'd plug that in there. I learned, right? Because I was stubborn, I wanted power. But right. I can't I can't knock. These things have been great. Yeah. So. If your wife tells you multiple times, you should probably listen, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hi guys. Okay, so we're walking the fence line, checking out any spots that need tightening, and I think we found the pig's secret entrance. Totally not a secret, it's right here. But it looks like there's this nice belly slide area. We're skimming right under that fence. So in they come and off they go, digging up our stuff.
So the goal obviously wasn't to have it fall that way over the fence. We wanted it to come on this side, but it took that spill. There's no way for us to get it back out. I don't like leaving it there, but I can't get over there to get it out. So I guess it is what it is. It's not what my preference is. It's not what I'd like to do as a neighbor, but you know, so be it. So by the way, gloves make a world of difference, man. So who's, who has good ideas today? You know, this is a firm grip glove from Home Depot. Who do you, wait, who has the good ideas today? Mimi. That's right, <laughs> Mimi has good ideas today. Okay, I gotta figure out how to turn this truck around. <laughs> okay, so as we're finishing up um, inspecting and working on tightening things up, this corner is bad. So we've got the main corner post and to your right, you can see a, sort of an H like a lowercase h. Anyways, to the left, you see the one tall T-post. So it's green with the white top. Well, if you look down at the bottom, it's not even in the ground. See that spade poking up? It's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be dug into the ground. So it's like, dude. All right, so Nathan's going to go point at it. I could have done it, but there he is. Look at that. That's crap. That's not in. It's Most nothing. Part. So the only, the only way a fence works is with the H brace to support the weight of the fence pull. And so this fence isn't gonna be tight. We're missing the whole H in support. So, oh, of all they the- They didn't put the brace post. They just didn't even do the post, the brace post and then the H across, I mean- and You can see the corner post tilting. Yeah, so this corner is already leaning because of the pressure from the all the line. And it's going up a hill, it needs that support. So yeah, that is a problem. Okay guys, with, with the cooler weather setting in, um, we're gonna get back to doing some more fencing. We have pasture six, that's that's where we're just doing a lot of tightening on the south side of it. Um, horrible job over there, but anyway, the tool worked really, really good actually, I was pretty impressed. Um, if you have barbed wire and you need to tighten it, that's the tool. Anyway, we have pasture six and it's set up and a lot of seven is or seven kinda is, so this fall at some point, we're gonna continue the fencing. Um, this double set is on the other side of the fence that's right by the pavilion and it goes by. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to start, or not filming, we're going to start fencing and we're going to go back down. This is where the cleared path was and it goes to our western border here by seven. And so we're going to go continue going down this direction, John and drop and then we are going to have to do the north south boundary line right there um, we have two fence sides done we just need to put in these next two um, the other part that we want to do is since we're picking up the bison maybe in november early november just depends on how the next few weeks go um, usually bison are worked november december january maybe february and by working it means you bring them in the chute you weigh them you give them their shots you just kind of check them up and you do that once a year. Um, I don't have a chute and I don't have a cattle or the pens all set up. So the location for the pens is actually gonna be right over here. If we look over here, we can see this T post sticking out of the ground that's white. This will be generally about the corner area of where the T post. And we will go that direction. We'll have some stalls and it'll wrap down around the hill. Um, but it's just gonna be a lot of a lot of posts. We're gonna to have to make it pretty, pretty beefy. But I like this location better than over on the side on that basketball court that was asphalt, just because this is right next to this asphalt. It's right next to the electric over here. That's pretty easy to get to, and it's kind of separated from all of the other pastures, and it doesn't influence those pastures in any way. It doesn't take room away. So that's where that's gonna go. The handling facility. And that's where the line that we're going to be doing. So this is going to be the fencing projects upcoming. Just wanted to share that with you. I am going to work on getting a tool instead of using my one hand auger. That's gas. That, that's like hurt my shoulder, my elbow for a little while. It took a couple months, but I want to get a, uh, not the rear three point mount, but a loader, front loader mounted auger attachment. I know it's more expensive. It's like three times or more expensive than just a rear three PTO mount, but you can put more down pressure on it. You can do a lot more with it, I think. So I think it's worth it. We'll get a bunch of posts in. Hopefully that'll go a lot easier. 
this finished job that we paid for, I'm not really impressed. And, and I think I can screw it up just as good as he did and spend half the money. So that's what we're gonna do. Hey, we want you to keep subscribing, keep liking, you know, uh, the like button on these videos, for some reason YouTube really, really likes those. So if you wouldn't mind, just hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, just hit the button as well. Um, there's a bell icon. If you tap that, it reminds you or tells you, hey, new video. Um, since you notice it, it doesn't cost anything, but um, we're glad you're enjoying it. At least nobody said anything otherwise, but um, it's a lot of trial and error, a lot of frustration at times. I think we're doing hopefully a good enough job and fingers crossed buffalo are coming pretty quick. So that's something to look forward to. I know we keep saying it, but it's happening. It's happening. So anyway, we'll talk to you next week and we appreciate you watching.